Thank you, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And I like the fog of San Francisco after the uh, heat of Sacramento. It's a nice balance. It's kind of the balance between California and Washington. We know where the fog is. <laughs> where the sunlight is. Uh, which is shocking in California. The clarity that we have about the dilemmas we're facing. Uh, by no means is California perfect. Uh, we have all lots of issues. Uh, many, many times, and we have all the disputes that a vibrant democracy uh, encounters. And as we look around the world, we see democracy is quite challenged in uh, its attempt uh, to govern with all the uh, multiplicity of values and ideas and, and strongly held beliefs and identities. So things are not so easy, yeah, not so easy in California. But in terms of these basic fundamental challenges, like climate change in our energy system, our mobility system, and uh, everything that goes into this modern economy connected to making it sustainable. Uh, that's something that California is definitely uh, right in point on. And it's not something that we just did uh, last year or five years ago. California has been dealing uh, with pollution of various times for a very long time. Probably, I would say most certainly, and the reason for that is the bad air pollution in Los Angeles uh, that, that occurred, that was very obvious uh, to my father when he was governor and to the person who succeeded him, Ronald Reagan. But I'm hoping that the inspiration of dense fog that worked so well in California will have a uh, similar impact in Beijing and Shanghai, and it appears to be doing that. China is increasingly becoming the leader in reducing uh, pollutants in the environment. They have a long way to go, but they're investing hundreds of billions of dollars and showing the, the regulatory vigor uh, that is willing to stand against uh, powerful forces uh, to get the job done. Now, in California, uh, the Earth Day, some of you may remember, uh, that took place, and Nixon signed the Clean Air Act, President Nixon, and Ronald Reagan was governor, and he made sure that California had a waiver so that California could impose more strict vehicle emission standards. Now, that was two Republicans working with a real problem called air pollution. And uh, since that time, of course, the air has been dramatically cleaned up in Southern California and in California, even though we have far more cars, I mean, many more cars. I think we might have had the time, maybe 10 million cars, now we have 30, 22 million passenger cars, 33 million vehicles. Uh, it's, it's been a real transition, uh, an increase in the use of fossil fuel, but we've been able to clean things up. Uh, but the point I want to make is that this work can't be done by one candidate one politician, one party. It takes an institutional, long-term political commitment. And based on that Clean Air Act in Washington and the California Air Resources Board that was created at the same time in California, California over these decades of governors of both parties have been able to build up, California built up the expertise, the lawyers, the scientists, the engineers, the uh, policy analysts in the Air Resources Board, such that I would say that the, the uh, uh, knowledgeable, trained people working on uh, the problems of air pollution in California are probably more numerous uh, and more coherent than what goes on in Washington under the uh, Environmental Protection Agency. So we, we've got the people, and we haven't got the political will because we have a problem, and in response to a challenge, we get a response. Uh, I always was impressed with Arnold Toynbee's theory of history. Now, nobody believes in great theories of history anymore. That's kind of passe. But his theory was challenge and response. That's how civilizations rise and civilizations fall. And California, like China, uh, has been challenged with serious air pollution. And we've responded. We're not done yet. Uh, but it's that interaction. Now that challenge exists in Washington. 
they exist the rest of the world. And responses are being made. And sometimes people slow down, sometimes there's setbacks, but if the challenge is real, then the response has to be real as well. So the challenge is not going away. There's no credible scientific report is that we can rest, we can relax. No problem, it was all a mistake. It was some professors trying to make money from uh, grants. I don't know how they figured that out. But, uh, whatever that charge was, it's not proving up. Uh, the academies of science, as everybody knows, but I like to repeat it, from China, the Academy of Science of Japan, of, of uh, Washington, America, Russia, Europe, everybody, they're all on board here. So we, the only question is, what do we do? And what are we willing to do? So here today we're going to talk about uh, the efforts that, that each of you in your own ways uh, can contribute. Uh, the Netherlands has been fantastic. Been one of the early people, the early nations committed to our zero emission vehicles. And I can tell you, even though that's a small fraction, we have maybe 400,000 zero emission vehicles uh, in California. Uh, we, it's a real thing. We've got to go further. And a few years ago, well, let's just take the utilities. And some of the representatives are here. And it was just a few years ago that the electric utility leaders said we could not get to 20% renewable electricity by 2020. And now we're 26, 27%, and we're on our way to 50% within a very short period of time. So the technology breakthroughs are there if the challenge is there, and the challenge is real. That is where I get my optimism. Uh, but we can't just let things happen. We got to make it happen. And so in California, uh, we passed laws uh, to set uh, renewable portfolio standards, uh, pollution emission standards, we have a cap uh, that will constantly be reduced. And this is not some kind of uh, amenity for the elite. Uh, we have to reduce the air pollution for all Californians, for all living things, because people are being damaged, and in some parts of California being damaged more than others. So this is about human health, human well-being, uh, particularly among vulnerable people, the young uh, and the elderly. So we got to make the investment. And yes, the investment is, we're talking billions and billions. Uh, but that's what life's all about. Life is not just about the abstract gross domestic product. Uh, you have to look inside, what is that? And that has to be about a, a quality of life that works for all of us. And that's what uh, the environmental efforts are about. And that's the environmental policies of California. And we are uh, promoting to the maximum degree uh, zero emission vehicles. Uh, we're moving too slow uh, in terms of the percentage that are being produced every year. But we're going to find ways that will be announced uh, very relatively soon. We're going to become more aggressive in promoting uh, zero emission vehicles, uh, energy efficiency in buildings, uh, in our land use policies. In every way we can, uh, we want to uh, summon our creativity, our capital, uh, our energy uh, to make California on the side of, of, of a sustainable climate. And we're not there yet. And the rest of the world isn't there. So we need to encourage each other. Business has to see what it is. And a lot of business people are not worried. There are a lot of business people who, who are very aware and very committed. Uh, so far, uh, this is not the biggest issue that people talk about. If you listen to the debates in Washington, or the debates that are in Sacramento over the weekend, climate change is not grabbing the headlines, but it is grabbing the change that's affecting our physical environment. So the, the physical reality and its changes due to climate change or due to the causes that are causing climate change are not stopping. So we gotta get on board and we gotta do stuff. And so whatever uh, can be, whatever we can think of, whatever we can contribute, uh, we have to rise to the occasion. And it's, it's not the most uh, exciting thing in terms of politics. I mean, one thing I know a lot about is politics. I know what issues get people all excited and galvanize and uh, 
dealing with the te technical uh, issues of what it takes uh, to deal with this problem. Uh, it, it, it's challenging. But the, the big uh, benefit here, the, big, the reality that is helpful, is this is a real problem. There's a lot of problems in politics that are invented. The people on the outs have to get a problem that they can blame on the ins so they can be in. As soon as they're in, the people that are now out got to figure out how they get in. So lots of little crises and problems and scandals and other things are invented. They're not, there's some reality to it. But the most real problem is the fact that uh, heat traffic gases are building up. And that's having global impact that's going to make everything worse uh, for humanity. And what we see in Syria, or we see in other parts of the Mediterranean or other parts of the world, it's all going to be exacerbated uh, by drought, by flood, by extreme weather events, by the moving of uh, vectors of, of disease. Uh, this is real stuff. And the fact that some of the worst consequences are over the horizon doesn't mean uh, we should be dealing with it. And the real takeaway is, if you wait until something is absolutely clear, your options are very few. If you can sense and see what's up ahead uh, early enough, then the action you take will be easier to manage and a lot cheaper. So there's no free lunch here, there's no escape. If we dawdle along and Congress uh, doesn't do what it should do and the President doesn't uh, take the action, uh, probably they'll be thrown out in two years anyway, or four years, whatever it take. <laughs> but then we'll just have to spend more money. It, it's almost like fixing the roads. If you don't want to fix them, you wait, and then you have to pay even more. So it's one of those problems that you got to take care of. And when you don't take care of, the cost goes up, and the difficulty goes up, and the wrenching of the political system gets worse. So right now, things are relatively civilized in the climate change debate. That's not going to be forever. You're going to get one group you know, against another that's going to get, uh, as uh, I like to quote, uh, my famous quote that I like from Thomas Hobbes, which I can say in Latin, uh, uh, bellum omnium, bellum omnium contra omnes, which means war of all against all. That's it was the state of nature before we got the Leviathan called the state. And I'm in charge of the Leviathan because that's the state. And we keep everything in order. If we weren't around, then you have a war of all against all. Well, that's where we're headed. We don't deal with climate change. And we're going to deal with it a lot more than we're dealing with it now. And that's change at the state level, the city level, the national level, the global level, and the personal level. It's all of that. So wherever you are, you can do something. And I'm just glad you're here and committing yourself to that. And I'm glad we're working so closely uh, with the Netherlands because uh, we're in the forefront. We have a long way to go, but we're ahead of a lot of other people. So I don't know how that makes you feel. But <laughs> the point is, take action now and get it done. Thank you.